Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at another one of my favorite Mac apps, and that is Spark by Riedel Software. Now, Spark is one of those applications that actually started off as an iOS application first, so I got to use it on my iPhone and on my iPad and really liked it a lot, and then they eventually brought it over to the Mac. Now, the great thing about Spark is that it is free. So there's not a not a charge for it, and so it's great uh, a great email client to try out. Uh, the other thing is is that it uh, integrates well with the Mac and the iOS devices, so that everything would be in sync. Uh, let me just go ahead and put this down. Let me show you the interface. So so this is the Spark interface, and as you can see here, I've got my uh, accounts, and you've got a pretty uh, simple interface down the side here. We have our actual uh, boxes and things that we normally would see with email and then we've got our middle area here that has uh, our various uh, email so if I click on this and if I look over here I can read the email over here on the side okay so again a pretty standard interface now one of the things that uh, makes Spark great is its smart inbox so if I just come over here to the smart inbox you'll notice that what it does automatically is it divides up my email by what it perceives are personal emails things that are notifications through here and then any email that has been seen would go right here and so of course the e email I was reading earlier this one right here has already been seen and so it'll show up down there in the sidebar now I can change any of this behavior uh, if I want to if I come up to preferences uh, depending on what I want to see if I go to smart inbox over here I can choose how many uh, which things I want to see and which ones I don't want to see and I can also control a few other things. For instance, in personal, I can show the visible elements before it uh, shows you the next category. So if I wanted to say, uh, let's say I want to say two, uh, just to really shrink it down there. And let's say the same with notifications, I got three. Newsletters, I got three. Okay, that looks good. So let's go ahead and put this down here. And you'll notice that now it's going to show just two, and it shows says view all three if I want to have this scroll out, or I can roll it back up. And so that just, uh, again, uh, allows me to customize it the way that I want to see it. So this can allow you to get through your email pretty quickly by knowing what things are just sort of notifications and what things you really need to respond to because they look uh, personal. Uh, now, the other thing I can do is customize the sidebar if I want to do that. Let me just go to Preferences here real quick and show you how that works. Let me just shrink this so we can see it. So if I come into the folders here, you see I can check and uncheck things that I, I want to see or don't want to see. And so if I wanted to add uh, spam, uh, I could click on that. You notice it's added the spam over here. If I unclick it, it disappears. Uh, so I can get a view of uh, particular things on this side. And I can also add uh, folders that are on my IMAP account, so in terms of Gmail. So if I wanted to add, uh, let's say, to read, I can do that. Now it's added to read down here. So that's uh, now up here under my favorites. So again, uh, just kind of a nice way to manage those folders uh, across all your different accounts. Uh, let me just go ahead and put this down here for a second. Now, one of the things I can do in processing my email, uh, for instance, let's go to this one, is across the top I have a number of actions that I can take. Uh, I can actually pin uh, this particular email, and so now you see it's pinned. And what you see here is I can actually undo it just by clicking that. Uh, but now that I've got the pin there, I've got that set and ready to go. Uh, I can also mark it as unread. And so if I hit mark it as unread, then it, uh, then it will mark that. And again, I can have that undo as well. I can archive the file if I want to. I can snooze it. Uh, and if I hit snooze, I can choose when I want to come back to look at this. I could say someday, uh, tomorrow, next week. I can pick a date, and I get this little date calendar that uh, pops out. And I can even choose to put an alert on it once the snooze has uh, happened. And so uh, that works out really good. So like, for instance, if I just say later today, you see how that's disappeared, and it's in the snoozed area now, and you can see it sitting right here. It also happens to be pinned, but what happens is is it's going to take whatever is the primary thing. And since it's snoozed, it's going to take that first before the pin. And you can see here I am, and then it's highlighted those things that I've that I've got there. I can also move it. If I just click on Move, I can choose the folder I want to move it to, or I can actually create a new folder if I want to do that. And then I've got this More up here. I can mark it as Spam, move it to the Inbox, or print it if I want to. Uh, so let's go ahead and just move it to the Inbox. So now you can see it's moved it out of Snoozed. You can see now it's going to show in the pins because it's a pinned item, uh, but it's also in my Inbox. 
and now it shows under the pins area right down here. So that gives me a number of ways to act on it. Now here you can see that it's showing in the inbox and it's showing as a newsletter. If I wanted to recategorize it, I could categorize it uh, any way I want to so that then Spark will learn that and put it where, it want, where I want it to go in the first place. I can also hit this plus here and I can then move it to a location if I want to do that as well. Uh, but I'm just going to click off of that. Now inside the email itself, I've got some options. I can reply by clicking this arrow here. I can also hit this. I've got reply, forward, print, or delete right in here. And if I hit this little area here, it's going to show the actual emails, and those will pop out. So it gives me a simplified interface or one that uh, allows me to respond or not. And you can see I can scroll down. And at the very bottom, I have reply, where I get a nice reply window that I can write back uh, to the user and I can even send and archive it so it'll send it and then archive the email and put it in my archive folder all in one shot uh, which is which is really nice uh, let's go ahead and put this down uh, I can also forward it from here as well so it's got some really uh, just really simple uh, neat features and I can even close the email if I want or then open it back up now let's take a look at a couple other things I can do that I really like about with about Spark. If I go back into these preferences, and again, let me just shrink this and bring it down here. Uh, I can add accounts inside of here if I want to do that. And uh, let's go ahead and just uh, click this. Say I want to add an iCloud account. And so I'm going to call this iCloud. And then press Add. And it's going to go ahead and add that iCloud account for me. You can see it's going through its sync process and it will add it to my account there and I'm all set and ready to go. Now what I can do is within these accounts I can choose that I want to see all uh, send notifications for every incoming message only for smart messages uh, so it'll mute strangers and automated messages or I can turn off notifications and what's nice is I can do that per email account right in here. Uh, I can also uh, choose where the folders are I can choose alias emails and then composing I can choose what signature I want to use. So let's uh, let's take a look at signatures and then I'll show you what it looks like over here what just happened. So I can enable signatures and if I want to I can add a signature and I can type in here. So if I just type my name and then I'll say uh, let's just make something up chief screencaster and I can put some information in here Okay, like something like that. And then I can do things like italicize it if I want to. I can bold certain parts. Uh, it's, it's an HTML format. I can add images in here and all of that. And so now I've got this. And I can add multiple signatures in here if I want to do that so that I can assign signatures per account. So if I come over to the account, I can either say default most recent or I can assign that actual signature that I've got there. Now that signature will always show up when I send these particular emails. And so again, uh, I love how the signatures work in here. It makes it really simple, uh, simple to use. Now let me go ahead and put the, put this down, and let's just come in here. And what's happened now is you'll notice I got these little arrows here, and that's because if I click these, I've got two different accounts going on here. And so I can now view each of these things by the particular account that I've got. And uh, you can see here that I've got this unified inbox that's showing me uh, emails that I've got on both uh, both accounts. Uh, so let me just show you this. If I hit reply now, since I set up the signature, you can see now it's put my signature in there automatically. And I can even just hit this and choose from multiple signatures or to add a new one right within the email itself. Again, I love that feature uh, because it just makes it simple, especially if you've got multiple emails or multiple roles uh, that you have. It really sets up the signatures nicely for you. Okay, one of the things built into Spark are swipe gestures. If I just swipe to the right, you'll see I have the choice of archiving or marking it as red. If I swiped all the way through, it would just mark it as red. So if I go to the left, it's delete. If I go or pin all the way through, it'll be pin. So I can either click on these or just do the swipes all the way through, and it'll quickly get you through your email. Now, if I want to change that behavior, I just come into Preferences. And down here, I've got a Configure button and it lets me say left the first might be uh, red or unread maybe instead on the first one I want to archive it so that when I swipe all the way through it'll do it uh, the left second instead of archive might be red or unread and then I'll do the same thing here I want to have delete and then I want to have pin so that they're done differently and I can save that and if I close that and come in here you can see that now I've changed it so a long swipe will now archive 
that direction and long swipe this way will delete. And so you can set it up however you want to make your mail uh, go quickly so that you can file it or take care of your, of your mail in a quick fashion. Now just a couple other things real quick uh, in the preferences here. Uh, there is the, um, the option for quick replies where I can reply with uh, these little quick uh, sayings and things here. And so again, it's uh, kind of a little gimmicky thing, uh, but it does allow you to quickly respond uh, to things. Uh, I can also set up the badge behavior uh, that I want. Uh, so that little badges that tell me how many unread messages are there and there are shortcuts included. Uh, let me just show you real quick on the quick reply. Uh, if I wanted to do a quick reply to, um, oh, I don't know, let's view all these. Let's say back to myself here. And let's just uh, scroll down to the bottom here. And you see I have this little quick reply area. And so then I can just choose one of these and it'll quickly send it. And so I can say something like thanks. And then it's going to send it here. You can see it doing its thing. And then it'll say you said thanks for this email. And so that's been sent. And so now that'll go into my... Uh, the, it'll return to the person with that reply. See, and it says, thanks and have a great week, uh, just like I set it up. And those things are customizable where you can add whatever you want onto that. So that gives you an idea of Spark. Again, it's one of my favorite email clients because it just makes email nice and simple and integrates uh, seamlessly with my iOS and iPad, uh, which I'll probably show you how that works as well in a future screencast. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.